Bible said that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word proceeded out the mouth of God. Welcome to the teaching ministry of Mark K. Miller, pastor of the Maranatha Family Worship Center. At the end of this dynamic teaching, we will give you contact information. Please enjoy the following sermon entitled, Finding Strength Through Adversity. Amen. We thank God for him and what he's doing right now. Do you have your outlines? In your outlines, you should see our first text. We want to talk to you. We want to talk to you about finding strength through your adversity. Finding strength through your adversity. And how many people in here right now is going through something? Our former bishop said this, there are three kinds of people in this world. Three kinds of people. He said, those that are coming out of the storm, those are going through the storm, and those that are getting ready to go to the storm. <laughs> we all have adversity. We all have problems. But the question is, how are we going to handle it? How are we going to go through it? And I submit unto you today that God wants to do something with us even though we have problematic conditions. Just because you're going through, just because your situation is bleak, it does not mean that everything is supposed to stop in your life. God wants to use your adversity to get your attention sometimes. And so today I want to just look at adversity. And if you look in your scripture, amen, Romans the fifth chapter, starting at the first verse, it says this, it says, therefore, being justified by faith. I want you to underline the word justify. Just real quick, and let me just exegete this so you understand what it means. Justified means just if I'd never done a thing. See, your faith in Jesus Christ makes it so that whatever you've done in your past, and, and your past may have been just yesterday, hello somebody. But if you confess it with your mouth and you believe it in your heart, the Bible says you're saved. Amen. And so being justified by faith, he says we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but what does he want us to do? But we glory, we glory in tribulation. We glory in adversity because we understand some things. That's why we can glory in it. We understand that God is trying to do something through our tribulation. He says we glory in tribulation. Knowing that, see we know something. Knowing that tribulation worketh what? Patience. And patience, what? Experience. And experience, what? Hope. And hope maketh not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. In your outlines, I believe I put down step number six. Please disregard that because this is taken from another, another series that I did. But here is the posture that I want to put forth to you. I want you to realize that our adversity has a God-ordained purpose and that we are to find strength. We are to find strength in our adversity to further realize our fullest potential. Now, why is, why is adversity so important to the believer? Why is it so important? There are five things that I want to give to you very quickly to let you understand why adversity is so important to you. Number one, God uses adversity to direct you. God uses adversity to direct you. Sometimes God must light a fire 
under you to get you moving. Problems often point us in new directions and motivate us to change. The question is, is God trying to get your attention? Sometimes your painful situation is trying to give you a new direction. Amen. See, when God wants to do something in your life, yes. sometimes he, to get your attention, he's got to send you off to jail. Yes. Woo! Yes. You mean to tell me that it was God that sent me to the jail? Well, the reason why God sent you to the jail is because you never would go to the church. Oh. And in jail, there was nothing else to do but go to chapel. And you heard the word and you got saved, so what's the big deal? Come on. Sometimes, number two, sometimes God uses adversity to inspect you. People are like tea bags. If you want to know what's inside of them, you must drop them in hot water. Adversity brings out the best in a man who's a hero. Yeah, yeah. If you're somebody that's supposed to do something for God and you've never been through nothing, how do we know that you can stand the test? But I've been through the storm and I've been through the rain and I've got to stay there. Oh, give God a praise. Give God a praise. Number three, number three. God uses adversity to correct you. Some lessons we learn only through the pain of failure. It's likely that as a child, your parents told you not to touch the stove. Hello. <laughs> Somebody told you, don't go there. But you went anyway. And then you had to find out for yourself that the stove is hot. Sometimes God uses adversity to correct you. There's a story that of this little boy, listen to this. There's a story of a little boy who, who got a parrot for Christmas. And his parrot, he, it was full grown and he, he's already talking. And this parrot, every five words was a cuss word. And the little boy would tell them, tell them, don't cuss, we're not supposed to cuss, don't cuss. And the parrot would just blankety, 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 blankety. And the, and the boy was just so embarrassed, so embarrassed. And he tried to discipline the bird, and the bird would just cuss him out. One day, the little boy got frustrated and threw the parrot into the freezer, closed the door, and he heard the, he heard the parrot just, oh, 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 heard a ruckus in the freezer. Then all of a sudden, there was just a calm. And the little boy said, oh my God, I think he's dead. So he rushes over to the freezer and opens up the freezer and the parrot walks out calmly. <laughs> and the parrot said, I'm very sorry for the language <laughs> that I have been using. I know it must have been most embarrassing to you and I'm sorry that I have offended you. And he said, and by the way, what did the chicken do? <laughs> about you but God don't have to throw me in the freezer number one God uses adversity to direct you number two God uses adversity to inspect you number three God uses adversity to correct you Number four, God uses adversity to protect you. A problem can be a blessing in disguise if it prevents you from being harmed by something more serious. Last year, a friend was fired for refusing to do something unethical that his boss had asked him to do. His unemployment was a problem, but it saved him from being convicted and sent to prison a year later when the management's actions were eventually discovered. You see, he got fired. He couldn't see that there was a problem. But the problem was, folks were stealing money from the company.